Okay, I was asked this question of like, yeah, I guess remembering things, wanting to remember things because there's a thought it might be useful, or I guess even memory, it could be even memories coming up and then triggering thinking. So in and of themselves, the thoughts and memories, um, as the Course in Miracles says in the early lessons, all my thoughts are meaningless, or essentially everything of form is equally meaningless. So a thought which just passes by like a cloud is meaningless. A memory that passes by is also equally uh, meaningless. Um, is there a need to attach meaning and start thinking about a thought that's passing by? Is there a need? Oh, a memory just flashes by. Is it important? Do I need to engage the, the ego thinking to um, do that? Well, uh, I would say the practice is, I mean, a memory you would be treated exactly the same as thoughts. It's just, um, and the thing with memories, you know, why do thoughts seem so loud? Why do memories suddenly start, you know, start crying over a memory or start thinking about the future or the past over a memory? Well, it's still got a lot of projected meaning. It is not meaningless yet. And so, you know, a memory pops up. It's my pet, it's my pet pigeon that died many years ago. Let me start thinking about it, start crying and start digging up all the photos about it. Um, and uh, so that's just, uh, it's just got meaning. I mean, if if I had a memory that I passed by a tree yesterday, I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm not gonna even notice that. It's just too boring to block the presence, you know, like, so what? You know, in fact, memories have, have no meaning, so they have no, no, it, it seems intrinsic power to um, distract me from the presence. So um, now sometimes when you're in the infinite flow, a memory may arise, there's nobody there to understand it or think about it. And some words may be said intuitively out of the nothingness. Now that's different to actually a memory having meaning to the ego and the ego start thinking about it and wallowing in it. Uh, it's a totally different thing. So when things are coming out of, out of flow, where there's no thinking actually, no thinker, no me exists in the flow in the, in the holy instant, and words may happen, memories may happen, uh, but uh, there's no thinker, there's no me that starts to have a relationship with it, and that's different. So um, that's the thing of like, uh, you know, um, doing the Course in Miracles and saying, well, my thoughts are meaningless, but memories are very meaningful. You know, I need to, I mean, that's just a trap, you know. A memory is, if you like, a type of thought. Um, and um, have, having said that on a practical level, um, you know, at the last instant, you know, memories need to be made 100% meaningless. But uh, on the way there, I mean, you can have important memories, you know, like you're in your head and the memory pops up like you've got to, um, you've got to take your sandwiches with you. But that's probably more from the, that's probably more out of presence than out of uh, the ego. You, um, so that's a different thing. Like sometimes intuitions out of nothingness come, which is grace. That's different to the ego. The ego doesn't usually tell you anything useful. It's more like... Um, uh, remember to pack some alcohol and a few donuts. I mean, that's more like the ego than uh, something coming from grace. You know, that's probably what the ego would remind you about. But something just um, lovingly reminding you out of nothing to do something useful, that's not coming from the ego. Um, so that there's differences and there's, um, there's uh, uh, sort of distinctions between what comes from ego and what is coming out of the infinite. Okay, I'll stop that.